Welcome to Land a House. I'm Seth. This is a ram pump. It's a water pump that needs no fuel or electricity to operate, only flowing, falling water. Basically, water is going to fall down a drive pipe into this side over here, activates this valve, which sends a pressure wave into the pressure tank that builds pressure up here and then sends water uphill on a ratio of about one to seven. So every foot of drop in here, you get seven feet of lift up. Now, there is something that happens to the pressure tank over time. Water will begin to rise up in here and the air bubble that you want up here slowly begins to dissolve into the water and it's sent uphill. And that kind of reduces your pressure over and over until there's just uh, water in this tank and no longer has the, uh, the air pocket that you want. Now, the reason for that air pocket is to cushion the pressure wave or the water hammer that's going into the pump. Otherwise, it's just going to hit hard and uh, it can break things. It's a big mess. Um, so in order to replenish this air pocket that's in here, you need to drain the water out and uh, basically reattach the tank so that there is that air pocket in there again. Now, if the pump is tilted off to the side, that can drain out faster the uh, air bubble will be dissolved, I should say, faster than if it is upright. So definitely try to keep your ram pump as upright as possible. But to drain out that, instead of having to take off the tank, I'm going to show you, you can just install a T with a ball valve on it right down in here. So let me do that real quick. So just simply unscrew the pressure tank right down here. And then you take that T, and I've not tightened this down yet, but I've just got a ball valve with a threaded T, and I can make sure I get all of those nice and tight here. And then this piece just threads onto that previous pipe razor. I'm not gonna tighten down that too much now, but, and then just reinstall your pressure tank. There's a close-up of what that looks like. So normally, this valve will stay closed and pressure will build up in the tank, but whenever it's time to drain this out, you can close the delivery, close the drive pipe, and then open the valve to the tank. And it may kind of gulp slowly, but you'll know that that water is um, coming out of there. And when it stops draining, close it back up. You can open your drive pipe up again, this valve will start clicking, building more pressure, and then you can open your delivery going uphill. To show this concept in action, I've stepped down here to my one inch ram pump. This has been running in the creek now for three months nonstop, and it has finally become totally waterlogged. And I can tell because of the sound it's making whenever it clicks, and also the drive pipe starts hitting hard. And so let me show you the uh, sounds that it's making here. I've heard ram pumps enough that I know what they sound like. And so you can see this one is hitting hard, but you can really tell if you listen to the drive pipe. Okay, so you hear that. Now let me go over here real quick and I'll show you the valve that I've installed. So if you look right here, normally you can see the air bubble right in here and it has slowly dissipated over the course of three months. So what I'm gonna do is close off the delivery and then close off the drive pipe. Okay, so everything has stopped. And now if I open this, all right, and that's just gonna slowly drain here. Now that all the water is out of the pressure tank, I'm gonna close this valve again. Open the one on the drive pipe. It's gonna start cycling after I get a little bit of water into the tank here. Okay, and you can start seeing that lift building pressure back in the tank. After there's some water in the pressure tank, I can now reopen the delivery pipe like that. Now you can see the amount of air that's in that pressure tank. 
And that's about where it's gonna stay for the next two months or so. It'll slowly start to creep up to the top and then it will totally fill up again. And that's what I have to do every three months or so to drain out that uh, pressure tank. I don't know if you can hear the difference with the way the ram pump is clicking, but if I step back over here to the drive pipe and uh, let you listen here. So let me bring up the old clip and this clip together and you can hear the difference how it was just hitting hard and kind of just um, cracking as it goes up this uh, pipe here. So. Anyway, makes a big difference in a couple things. If it's hitting hard, then the ram pump is not very efficient and it can tear stuff up at the pump if there's too much pressure. And also the delivery volume up top reduces as that air pocket is removed from the pressure tank. So the pressure tank is necessary even though the pump will operate without it. Now, some people ask me, is it necessary to have an inner tube or some kind of foam inside of the pressure tank? No, it's not. Um, I've actually found it's quite ineffective to have the inner tube in here because the pressure buildup can be pretty high in that tank and the inner tube just doesn't really do much of anything. It actually may even hinder the uh, pressure if it uh, gets sucked down into the pump. So in the future, I'm going to be um, phasing out the inner tube in the ram pump and I may be adding the valves so that you can uh, remove the water on your own down here. I have four different sizes of ram pump available at landahouse.com, Amazon, and on eBay. I have those links in the description down below if you want to have your very own ram pump to take water out of the creek and lift it up the hill. I'm Seth with Land of House. If you have found this video helpful, please hit that thumbs up button, make sure you're subscribed, and notification bell. And if you have a good comment, leave that down below. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.